y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler, and you've arrived at day 76 of the 100 Days of Zentangle Project 2020. Thank you all so much for being with me today. I have our special guest with us again today. His name is Caden. He is my grandson, and he is awesome at art. So he has decided to participate with us again today. Go for it. Caden, say hi. Hi, everybody. All right. So today's tangle is called Cabana, and uh, uh, it is by South African CZT Mill Device, and uh, it is deceptively difficult to draw. <laughs> it is a very cool ribbon tangle, and uh, I've always been fascinated with it because of the overlapping uh, qualities that it has. So let me show you uh, a couple of things now. So I'm working on an apprentice tile today, and uh, and a Zentangle apprentice tile. This has uh, this is more like cardstock. It has a thicker surface, and uh, it's uh, um, quite a bit more smooth. And I noticed something that these new apprentice tiles I got have a much smoother surface than the ones that I've had for a couple of years. So um, it makes me go wonder wonder what's up with that so okay so what we're gonna do at least what i'm going to do today is do i want a string i kind of do okay so i'm going to start by putting four dots here let me give you a pencil there you go putting one dot on each corner of your tile the corner Mm-hmm. like this Okay. Okay. So I did, okay. I right. Now you're going to draw a line and connect each dot. And it doesn't have to be straight, doesn't have to be curvy. It can look whatever way you want. I'm going to try to stay calm today and not do any loops in mine because I think it may be confusing. And then once I have finished connecting all four of my dots and I have a nice penciled border and I'm going to put my pencil down and switch back to my pen. Okay, so what I've decided to do is I'm going to draw one ribbon from uh, one diagonal corner of this to the other. Let me show you what I mean here. You can't quite see the picture, can you, buddy? I can't. All right, there. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, let's see if I can do this without blurring the camera now. All right, so what I'm going to do is connect one corner to the other, and I'm going to do it on each side like this. And I'm just going to make it a straight line on one side, and then I'm going to go over to the other side. I don't know how to make a straight line. Me neither. You're in good company. Mines aren't mines mines aren't straight. Yours are straighter than mine. They are. All right. Are mine are pretty wiggly. Mine are what's called deckled. Mine are wiggly wiggly. I like that. You're it's going to work, buddy. It's still going to work. Uh, now, I'm going to draw a skinny aura on each side of each of these lines. Remember an aura is just a parallel line and I'm going to make this kind of thin and I'll go all the way up on one side and I'm going to go over to the other side and I'm going to do the same thing and hopefully stay in camera and not be blurry am I in camera yes I see all right do you need another yes, tile I we don't make mistakes in Zentangle, Bubba. You do? There's nothing My wrong with that. You yes, could go over that. I'll give you another one. Calm down. It's not thin. It's, it's not thin. thin. Okay, yeah. pull one out. You're going to have to cancel this part out of the video. No, I'm not. Artists do make mistakes. They -uh. just don't admit them. No, you're wrong. No, they this actually are, not don't in this admit farm. them. This, this art form does not believe in mistakes. They believe that each time you make something that you consider a mistake, it's an opportunity to learn something new and do things differently. That's what I 
So that's funny. Okay. I, I find it very relaxing and freeing to know that I can't do it wrong. All I can do is the best I can do and move on. Mm -hmm. I love you. That's, that's what what baby why because they don't admit their mistakes oh well i think it's all about perspective if you don't consider what you're doing a mistake and it's your art then i figure you can do what you want okay so what I'm going to do next then is I'm going to make another couple of these ribbons, okay? And I'm going to make these two curve off from each side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to going to redraw this line partially on the way up. And then I'm going to curve out. I'm going to skip down here. Now, I didn't get that very even, did I? But it's going to be okay. What I think I might do is... I'm not sure I can fix it, but we're going to try. I'm going to put my inner... R, my These skinny R's on the inside here. And intentionally sort of get... Okay, I'm working on it, guys. But I'm going to do it on the inside here. Okay, and remember, it does not have to be perfect. As I remind myself all the time, we have done these over and over, Caden. I have proven to myself over and over that what I consider yucky to begin with can still turn out really awesome. My first one looked really bad, just saying. I bet I could take that tile and make something cool out of it. You're an artist. So artist are you. Do that stuff. So are you. I'm not an artist. I'm a kid. No, you're an artist I'm a who's kid. a kid. Or a kid who's an artist. That just makes things weird. Yeah, it does sound weird. Why does that sound weird? A kid who's an artist? Yeah, you said and I'm an artist. Is a kid. Yeah, like it's not, it just has a weird routine. Artists can be kids. You're a kid, rude. Dang. I am a kid. You're right. How did you know? Once, uh, uh, hero, uh, something weird. I don't know. Is it appropriate for TV? No. Okay, what? An artist can be a kid, but a kid can be an artist. That's what I just said. <laughs> I mean, is that? That uh, the artist can change into a kid, and, the, and a kid can change into the artist. Uh, why can't they be one and the same? Because they can't. Hmm. If only the world were truly black and white, but it is not. The There's world has people. shades of gray. There are black and white people, yeah. but on the inside, we're all the same. Yeah, you're right. We all have one heart. Well, cats have eight lives, they say. But Nine lives. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't believe that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to like cats. Not everybody likes cats. Not everybody Sandy. likes dogs. Of course, we know that they are very misinformed. What? Oh, I like it. No, it's it's not fun. No. It's fun and funky. Dude, what? You're rushing. You need to slow down. Do you need to get another one? You can. No. Okay. No, it's all right. You might be surprised, though. Okay, let's get back on track here. Kaden, you're going to make this thing an hour and a half long. No, Do you, you can have another one if you want. But if you take another one, I want you to slow down. Take your time. All right? Yes. Because that looked like something that happened because you rushed. Well, I'm trying to also stay with you, so. Well, that's okay. I'm about to show them a couple of different ways to draw this. And while I'm doing that, then you can um, catch up. Okay? All right. So, on Cabana, 
I will admit to you that the way the step out is drawn is extraordinarily hard for me, okay? I'm going to do my best to show that to you right now, and I'm gonna put it in this straight one simply because I'm not sure I can draw it this way and curve it. I'm honestly not sure I can draw these this way and curve them either, but we're gonna find out. All right, so uh, in the step out, what they have you do is they have you drawing these rhomboid shapes all the way down the side, okay? And a rhombus is like a diamond shape, right? And so what they're doing is, um, Let's start down here. And I'm gonna do my best to do this right. And um, I, I expect for it to be a bit messy and uneven, but um, we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna start this. And I'm gonna try to show you a way that will be maybe neater. But in the step out, she has these rhomboid shapes. That's not my word, by the way. I borrowed that from Linda Farmer. But you see already I've got a problem. They're very hard to draw in evenly this way. Straightest line that I've ever drawn before, Cindy. Wow, good job. And it helps to take your time, doesn't it? No. No. <laughs> All I did was make sure that my wrist was steady. Okay, well, you definitely need to, to have your wrist um, um, positioned correctly. All right, so now we're going to do this all the way up and do our best to keep these evenly spaced and about the same size. Now, I don't really have trouble with the first one. I have trouble with the second one. Okay, that's actually, for me, that's darn good. <laughs> it's all right, take your time. I'm gonna show them an easier way to draw this here in a minute, so slow down. But first, I have to demonstrate the way the step out is drawn, even though I have trouble drawing it that way. A lot of trouble drawing it this way. But I just want to point out, it is possible. And those of you that have an easier time with spacing and placement than I do may not have an issue with this, doing it in this way. This is certainly valid. I just find it difficult for me personally. And so I'm going to show you guys the way it is in the step out. And then I'm going to show you the way I'm going to draw it when I have a choice. I feel like this should be called broken arrow because it looks like a bow and arrow. Like it kind of does, doesn't it? Through, like a, a lot of arrows and like made the thing and the wood's like bending up now. It kind of does look like that, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. Okay. So uh, I think I'll draw a partial one in here. I actually did it fairly well, which is fairly amazing for me. Okay, and then I'm going to draw this up this way. Okay. <clears throat> the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the bottom of these two with a V shape. Let me show you. And hopefully do a decent job. Unlike that, okay? So maybe if I turn this a little bit, I can do it better. Like so. Sounds like somebody's cutting trees around here somewhere. Oh, uh, the ringing in your ear. Ugh. Oops. Okay. And this is one of the problems I have with this, is joining these boxes up and getting this correctly is tough for me. May not be for everyone. Okay. So once you have joined the inner edges on the bottom of each set of these. Then we're going to move to the top, okay? What we're going to do there is we're not going to connect them in the middle with a V. We are going to leave that open, okay? And we're going to take the top of this and continue on to the edge line. Yeah? So I'm going to do it all the way up. 
on one side and then do it all the way up on the other side. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my tile and <laughs> whatever way is easiest for you, then extend that line on the other side out to the edge. That's an illusion, that's a really magic. Yes, it's, it's optical illusion, absolutely, smart boy. Oh, I, first I see squares, then I see rectangles in there. Uh -huh. I just wanted to put my hand through it, but I know that it's really it's not. Kind of cool. Oh, uh, my eyes hurt. No, oh, my eyes hurt. My eyes, my eyes. All right. So then I think I'm going to put the top of one right here and have this go down here. So now you're starting to see the illusion, the optical illusion of the going from underneath and out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill these little rhomboid shapes with, with hatch lines. Just like this, I'm trying to use a very light pressure on the pen so that it just strokes gently across the paper. And I'm trying to get a nice, narrow, consistent line. And with these smooth apprentice tiles, the pen literally just glides across. How are you doing, buddy? Uh. Well, that's actually, he's got triangles instead of rhomboids or almost got it you just got your rhomboids turned the wrong direction on that on that step it's not wrong by the way it's just different it's an opportunity it's unique it's like a you know exactly so what you want to do is you did the right thing you started with the long line against there and then you point down that's right but these two lines need to go straight down here mm. does that make sense okay yeah try again try again Try again. Look at this middle row as your practice row, okay? Okay, did you get it? Better, 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 okay? Just take your time. This is not an easy pattern. This is a this is a kind of a difficult pattern. And uh, I probably would have chosen something else if I thought you were going to draw with me today. Not that I don't think that you're capable of this, mind you. It's just it takes some concentration, and that's sometimes difficult when you got more exciting things in the works. All right. What's more, the What's more exciting than this? Nothing. The only thing that I would be doing right now is sitting on the couch. So. Well, that's boring. You and Mari decide not to play anymore? Have a fight? Well, he went, I think he went into his room. I don't know where he is now. Yeah, he probably needs some alone time. He's like that. Mm. Um, you ready to get started again? Yep. All right. And you can adjust these rhomboid uh, sections with, with extra lines if you find them too short or too, um, well, I guess if they're too wide, you're stuck, aren't you? Take your time, Caden. I can feel you rushing. Okay, hold on. I'm about to show you an easier way to do it. Okay, about to show you something easier. Okay, I just have to. I have to finish one exactly the way it is in the step out, so that everybody knows how it is supposed to be drawn or how it was deconstructed. And then, Mari, do you want to play a game right now? <laughs> you're giving up on me, aren't you? Mm -hmm. You can go play. Go ahead. You don't have to finish. Okay. Yeah, it's cool. If you're getting stressed out, this isn't working for you. Yeah, this one is a little hard. It is a little bit hard. But like I said, I am about to show them an easier way to draw this. All right. Now, this is uh, the way that Cabana is drawn in the step out. Okay. And uh, now I'm going to show you the way that I like to draw it because I find it uh, quite a bit less stressful. 
uh, than trying to match up the rhomboid shapes. And like I said, it certainly can be done. And those of you with better sense of direction than I may have an easier time doing it this way. So I wanted to offer you this option for how to draw it. Uh, but let's move over here next and let me show you what is easier for me. Okay, I'm gonna draw this from the top down, okay? And I'm gonna start at the top by, by uh, putting these slanted lines almost to the middle and I don't want these to touch in the middle, okay? but I'm gonna go ahead and extend them out to the edges, all right? Then, because this line is curved, I'm going to make the curve on my rhomboid shapes, or the line on my rhomboid shapes slightly curved too, so that it sort of matches the line. And this one as well, curving with the line, right? Then, I'm going to draw in my rhomboid shapes, which I find much more easy this way. And then I'm able to work with the bottom to make sure these are pretty even. And I can keep curving up. Just don't forget that you don't want these this bottom line to go over to the edge. You wanna leave a gap there, okay? So now I'm going to join these up Okay, so that's not perfect. But if you redefine the line, i.e. draw over it with a, and make it thicker, <laughs> then sometimes you can adjust that, all right? And so from here, I'm going to drop down just a little bit and I'm going to once again, draw my line to the edge, okay? And, and I'm going to stop this line where this rhomboid shape ends above it, right? So on this side, I'm going to start this line right below this, okay? Then I've got the top shape from my next section down. I'm going to draw in my rhomboids, taking into consideration the curve of the line, if there is one, now, if you guys are new to tangling, you might want to just do straight for now. This tangle can be challenging enough as it is. And again, this is part of the issue that you've got to deal with, is getting these evened out. Now, once you sort of get used to this, It's not so hard. Did I just do that wrong? I just did that wrong, didn't I? Hmm. This is supposed to go down. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Thank you, Kaden. Not in my art. Okay, there's a mistake in this one though. <laughs> it's an opportunity, Cindy. Way to, way to make me eat my words, boys. Way to make me eat my words. I made you eat your words. All right, Cindy. We're gonna have to figure out this opportunity. Well done, boys, well done. I made you eat your words. Yes, you did, baby. All right, so this is going to go right here. I'm just going to attach it, draw this line down, and put a different fill pattern in these just to make it interesting. See there, except I already drew this one in. <laughs> Let's see, another opportunity. I am so, so lucky today to have so many opportunities to learn things a different way. All right. Okay, well, I'll admit to you, this was more messy than this one. 
Uh, don't throw it in my face. That's just mean. Throw it in your face. All right. The other thing that you can do Now, the reason these point down in the original step out is because it, it gives you continuity of the, of the ribbon line. But you could just as easily hatch them on the diagonally, on the diagonal. I mean, it works. It definitely works. Since that's clearly what we're gonna be going for today. I'm going to have a lot of post-production work to do here today. It's going to be all right. And I'm going to do these up and down because I can. And I suppose if you wanted to stick a few sparkles in these, you could. I don't think I'm going to. So, uh, not my best work, but okay. Uh, I think I will still uh, keep an eye on that and work on it over here. We're going to try this again, see, see if we do a better job this time. Um, no promises. Okay, I got through that one. Of course, I got through the first one over here too. Let's see if we can do the second one. Again, I'm gonna start this line out to the edge from where these hatched lines start. And I'm gonna try to figure out how these should curve here with the line. curve with the lines. Hey, looky there. So this is definitely something you're going to want to practice before you put it in something precious like your journal or whatever. There is definitely most certainly a learning curve. I like doing it this way so that I can use the angle of the lines above it to keep me from getting off um, kilter. And sometimes it works to better effect than it did today, but uh, on the other side. But that probably should have gone down a little bit, but I think I'm gonna get a break here because uh, this is um, curving. No, no, Cindy, no, 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 no. I did it. There were... I uh, made another opportunity for myself. You made a mistake? No, I would never do that. You made a mistake. No, I would never do that. <laughs> Nothing like having Jiminy Cricket on your, on your shoulder for these things, is there? Well, we definitely have another opportunity here. <laughs> Okay, so these need to go down. Hey, I said this one was challenging. All right. So, join these up. So, I have met with um, varying results here. 
Now, let's stick around and, and see if I can um, put this together in a way that ends up uh, something decent. I make no promises, but uh, we're gonna give it a try. my hatch length. Uh-oh. I went all the way to the edge on that one. Yeah, nobody will notice. Thank you, baby. So, as the boys have so so uh, righteously pointed out, I've made several mistakes in this. Mistakes are okay. Mistakes are okay. Okay, thank you, baby. That's very philosophical of you. If you ever make mistakes, you're a loser. Dude. You make mistakes. Hey, no fighting in the videos, buds. I only said uh, that if you uh, don't make mistakes, then, then uh, you're not even alive. That's right. Nothing wrong with that. No, he said it right. He said, if you don't make mistakes, you're a loser. Yep. Well, people that think they don't make mistakes are definitely losers. Okay, calm down in there. All right. I'm going to start this fixing up process by putting line weight right here, right here, right here, and right here. And with the hope, except for this one, with the hope that this will, um, this will enhance the quality of going beneath. Okay, now it's going to be marginally effective here, because of my little um, opportunity. But uh, this is still going to be fine. And if you won't tell anyone, I can always bring my little jelly roll up here in, in this area and just clip off the end that's pointing down, or I can leave it the way it is. Let's not prejudge our outcome. And I may get to a point on this where I feel like it cannot be saved and start over. I don't know. It does happen to me. I try really hard, though not to stop before I'm finished and then judge. It can be difficult, <laughs> really difficult, but uh, I think this is a life lesson type of a thing. By not giving up or prejudging your results, you, you, you give yourself an opportunity to succeed where otherwise you have not even tried. So that's where I feel we are here. Now, uh, I'm going to go over here and do my line weight bottom and top again. And use that to disguise any extra lines that I may have going on here. by just doing those two areas and not going around the whole thing. That's what's giving us our uh, look.
Okay, on the tops of these, all the way to the edge. And then these bottoms will be okay. This might work somewhat. Now let's see what we can do with this poor thing over here. And it really is sad. <laughs> it really is sad. Uh, okay, so let's see if this helps us at all. I sort of kind of doubt it, but this is what we've got to do. So I really recommend that if you're going to try this curved, that you be a more experienced tangler. Of course, you're welcome to try any technique, but as you can see, there's a learning curve. And again, I'm not suggesting that you are incapable of that. I'm just saying if you're a beginner, uh, I don't want you to get frustrated and give up, okay? All right, so. <laughs> Not sure how much help that was. Let's do some more uh, work on this and see what happens. So one of the things that they used in the step out art or that Milda used in her step out art was uh, checking or using night bridge type of an action on this outer aura. And so I'm going to do that again. Anything and everything I add to this embellishing wise is going to help distract from the things that I'm really not proud of in here. Some of the lines and, and uh, things that I drew in in the wrong angle because unintended, res unintended results happen. And what part of what we part of what we develop in art is the confidence to keep going and trust in our ability to finish up a tile and do it with best practices in mind taking our time with what is left and not prejudging our outcome now, some of us have standards that are so high, and trust me, I have been one of those, and I still cringe sometimes at the quality of what I put out, especially when I'm, when I'm confronted with how much better at this you guys are than I am. But again, I am here to share the joy of this, and if you guys are finding joy and feeling accomplishment, then that is my joy. That is my accomplishment is having you guys finally get a pattern that has been tough for you or to have you finish a tile and go, oh my God, I'm so glad that I finished this because you know, otherwise I would have thrown it away. And trust me, I have been there. I have been where you are. Most of the time I'm still where you are. So I am one of you and the CZT after my name just means that I have been blessed with the opportunity to learn from the masters. Uh, from Rick and Maria and from Holly and from uh, Molly and um, Martha. And uh, that experience can't be, can't be measured. And so I can show you best practices and I can show you tangles, but we are all on the artistic journey together is how I feel about that. Now, I can use the checked on all of them and have this be a very unified look, or I can um, orb this one in the middle and do the checks again over here, or um, there's a lot of different things that I can do. I think, though, that on this one, because I'm sort of flying blind in, in a couple of these other areas, that I'm going to go ahead and stay with st something standard that I know will function right and that I don't have to worry about. 
you know, I managed to answer a few comments from you guys uh, today. I'm really late getting this, this video recorded today because I spend a couple of hours uh, answering comments. And I just have to say, you guys fill my cup. You fill my need for for approval and um, um, all of those things. It's not that I need to be famous, but I do need some appreciation sometimes, and you guys give me that, all that and more every time you make a comment. And I just want you to know how much those comments mean to me. Uh, I think uh, Mariette uh, De Witt from the Netherlands, or from Holland, I think, um, sent me the nicest comments uh, talking about the length and how much she enjoyed looking forward to them. And, and somebody, I think it was Roseanne uh, Barilla said that she loved uh, when she, that she got excited when she saw the videos were more than 45 minutes because she got to spend more time with me. That was so nice. Oh my God. Oh my God. You guys are so good to me. Especially when, when I get into Ed and Nikki and I'm slapping, I'm face palming myself at, at the stupidity of some of the things that come out of my mouth. And they're stupid. It's all right to call it that. But you guys are so accepting and so loving. Uh, I just, I adore you and I appreciate you more than you can know. So thank you. Thank you for all of those wonderful, sweet comments that you guys give me every single video some of you are so good about leaving comments and i appreciate you all of you even those who who aren't leaving comments but feel this in their hearts i appreciate you too all right so let's start up here and move down yeah maybe not i think it'll be better if we do it i don't know i don't know what i'm doing i'm all discombobbled discombobulation if that's not a word from the south i don't know what is it's dismembered, not discombobulated. oh mari says it's dismemberment not discombobulation <laughs> he might be right about that no guys keep it down don't want to hear it All right. So this is helping some. Uh, it's bold and dramatic enough to uh, get the, your attention off of the other stuff that were definitely most certainly not mistakes, but opportunities to use a lot more ink. <laughs> I'm still considering dropping a Bronx cheer on this over here. Oh, Bronx cheer makes me laugh. There's no mistakes in Zentangle, but we have a tangle just for you in case you make one. I find Zentangle so whimsical sometimes. And if you aren't on Mosaic, you should go just to uh, look at Maria Thomas's posts. When she posts a, a, a tile that she has done, and she almost always has... A little story that goes with it about garden fairies or gnomes or something fun. She just sees the world in such a beautiful, whimsical way. That's something I highly admire about Maria. There, she is, you know, she's she's quite a bit older than me. Not, you know, 10, 15 years older than me. But she is so childlike in her joy of the world and of the things that go on, uh, the beauty that's in it, that that is something that I admire tremendously is her ability to find the beauty in everything. So I love Miss Maria Thomas. She is just she is one of those people that makes the world a more bright, beautiful, sunshiny place. And uh, I just adore her. But if you're not a member of, or if you don't haven't downloaded the Zentangled Mosaic app, they have it for both iPhone and for Android. Um, you can follow me. On, well, I'm not sure we, yeah, well, you can... Uh, 
I think you appreciate an artist on there and then you you will see them come up in your in your um, news feed and remember you it's free for you you only have to start paying for it if you want to start uploading your own art and uh, I did free for a long time and just went through and and uh, enjoyed being inspired by other people's art but um, it's worth it to start. I remember the day that I first, that I did my first upload, I was so nervous because some of the things on there are just inc incredibly, extraordinarily just, oh, there's so many talent, pe talented people in this community. And there is no warmer, more beautiful place than that app to communicate with other Tanglers. Now, of course, if you're gonna comment, I think you have to um, pay the fee for it every month too. But again, it's worth it. Um, that, is, that is the place where I first learned to be confident in what I was doing. They are so warm and accepting and um, they will embrace you and encourage you with your art. They always find something positive to say. You never, ever, ever have somebody say something mean to you on there, ever. I, it's never happened to my knowledge. It, it it always is incredibly pleasing to me to find how beautiful the hearts of other Tanglers are. And they are. This community brings people that feel the same way about the world together. And uh, it's a beautiful place where we live, isn't it? It's a beautiful place where we see the patterns and the art and the beauty in everything around us. And we don't worry about all the negativity that goes on in the world here. This is a very safe place to create beautiful things and be appreciated by others who understand the work that goes into these pieces. And just because they are small does not make them uh, any less a piece of art. Just want you to know, there are a lot of art galleries with Zen Tangle inspired art in them these days. And uh, that's something to think about. All right. Uh, okay, so this is where I'm at now. Let's do some shading and then we'll think about the background. Okay. Um, if we do anything back there or not. So for shading, I'm gonna show you my Verithin, and then I think for this, I'm going to try my uh, Koi coloring brush in gray, uh, because this needs um, quite a good bit of shading to be really effective. Okay, so as you can see on these, let me start on this um, straight one. As you can see, what we have done here is we have given an overlapping look, an op, an op art look to this you'll see this looks like it's coming from beneath here right and then it comes here and it goes down here in this Y shape and then disappears between this behind this and the next one is like links in a chain right so what we want to do is we want to enhance that that um, overlapping look like we always do when we have that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna shade right here on the top of the Y, right here, because this looks like it's gonna go down behind here. We're gonna shade underneath the arms of the Y, all the way out to the edge, but not across the blank spot in the middle. All right? And we're gonna continue that from here to the center of the Y we're basically shading the, the underneath and the over of the Y and nowhere else where it comes out and where it goes beneath. Pretty easy to remember. I'm walking on sunshine. Oh, sorry. I forget myself when I'm feeling good. And don't feel good. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> I've not warmed my voice up in years. 
when I stopped being able to uh, perform, it sucked something precious out of me. And uh, I have not tried to sing for a long time. Um, maybe I need to get over that and try warming up my voice a little bit and see if the issues that I was having uh, have gotten any better now that I'm not uh, quite so bad off symptom-wise with my illness. That was a huge loss for me because uh, I love to sing, I love to perform. That was a big part of my identity. And so this has, this art form has replaced that creative outlet for me. And that's why it's so deeply important to me. Um, because it, I found my identity through having this again. So I am deeply, deeply grateful for this art form and for the healing. And, and if you're new, you might ask yourself, well, how is drawing going to help you? Well, <laughs> don't get me started because there's a ton of ways. Get her started. Get me started. The kid says, get her started. I so, said, get her started. I know. I, that's what I said. I said, the kid says, get me started. That's not what you said. Okay, baby. And then, and then he goes, that one step too far. This far, no farther. Sorry. <laughs> that is a quote, by the way, from that really awful Kevin Costner uh, Robin Hood movie back in like the 90s or the 80s. <laughs> and uh, it, everyone was making fun of him because his English accent that he tried to use was just atrocious. <laughs> and so and so he was giving a speech in that movie to to the, the men, uh, his merry men. And uh, he and he's and he says, so. We're go we'll go this far, no farther. And ever since that, all I can every time I say the word farther, <laughs> that's what I think of. Yes, that was a glimpse inside Cindy's mind that we don't want to repeat too often because it's a scary place in there. Now I do have my mono zero, which I will use to clean up these edges. Because I tend to get crazy with these tortillons. And I will definitely be coming back through here with multiple shading passes. Once you blend them out, there's lots of more places to go. Okay. Getting there. basically the tangle from start to finish. Uh, I am going to continue to shade on this, uh, but first I think um, normally I don't do this because, and uh, one of the reasons is because I don't want you guys to get to the point where you depend on this to uh, fix things for yourself. That said, <laughs> If you need to fix things for yourself, a jelly roll is usually very helpful. So what I'm just going to do is go through in the spots where I've got stray lines sticking out. And I'm just going to gently tap them out of there. And there's not too many places that I'm going to worry about. I'm just going to clean up a tiny bit. And if I can get by with not using it, I will because uh, they do show up. Mm. 
Okay. Now you want to, if you're if you are repairing lines with a jelly roll, you're going to want to do that before you shade because it's going to make a difference on the shade, how the shading looks, because you will go over the jelly roll with shading. And so it's really frequently better to have that done uh, and drawn in before so that you can shade over the jelly roll, okay? What I'm gonna do is try to take out this little white spot that sort of runs my flow there, just like this. Now I'm gonna zoom in I normally would not do. You can see it, right? And once this is dry, then I will probably tap on a little bit more so it's completely opaque and covers that all the way. But um, you want to go very, very lightly with the jelly roll. Use as little as possible in as few places as possible because it can look really junked up and messy if you use it too much. Okay, so I'm going to let that set and worry about that later. And I'm going to shade these other two sides. Now, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and use my Koi brush and my Tombow, um, and my Tombow um, N00 blender with the knowledge that the more I use it, the more color I'll be picking up from the ink pen. But at this point, I think it's gonna be fine on here. So first, I'm going to take this and run along any of these sides where, where my graphite uh, spilled over where I don't want it. Now, the reason I'm going to use the Koi brush on this, the coloring brush pin on this is uh, several reasons. The first is because uh, I want to have a good deep shade on this, and that this is the best way to do that. Uh, the second reason is that I'm able to blend a little bit more um, exactly with my um, Tombow blender than I can with a pencil or with a Tortillon, at least the ones I've got right now. So uh, those are two of the reasons, and I'm just gonna stroke a little bit of this right onto the line, trying to keep my touch really light because I don't want a big, uh, strong line right there, even though that's probably what I'm gonna end up with. The more we can deepen that right under and on top of this, this uh, Y shape, the more dynamic this is going to be. Then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my blender uh, marker and uh, run it up and down these uh, hatched sections, the rhomboid sections, so that uh, I can deepen the shading in there. I would normally shade that with a graphite pencil, but um, since I'm not going to use one for this, then I'm gonna to try to find an alternative. Remember to try to get your shading color right up under that line and be the deepest with it right there. This will make a huge difference in the overall in the overall quality here. I hope. I remain ever hopeful. somewhere. I'll zoom out a little bit here. You don't need to see it that close. <laughs> All right, let's get some color in on these.
Now let's get that blender marker out and see how we do. It is interesting that once you understand the properties of something in your toolkit, how that shifts the way that you approach it. So uh, what I've done is stop using it as much, this blender marker, because I understand that it's going to move the pigment of the pens. But in this instance where I want a really nice dark shade, then I'm kind of happy the, that I have that quality. See how we're doing. Okay, well, we're getting there. <laughs> we're getting there, that's what I say, and I'm sticking to it. All right, one more section over here, and then we'll talk about the background. under here, didn't I? Well, consider it done now. I shouldn't have done that. I may be able to highlight that out. Boy, I skipped a couple of spots here, didn't I? Let's see if we can pick up some of this ink color. Uh-oh. Did not want to do that. Oh, we're going to see if we can fix that. got some cleanup to do um, with my jelly roll again and that is going to be if I encroached like this right here will need to be fixed uh, so that we don't get too messy in here but till I decide uh, what all about that is going to happen, then I'm going to take my ink pen again and I'm going to figure out what, if anything, I want to do on the background. I definitely want to do something, but I want it to be subtle and easy to put in the background. So I'm actually thinking about adding some printant. If I do that, maybe I want to change the color of my pen and maybe do them with one of my gray jelly rolls so that they are really, um, so that they are really light and in the background. Or I could use my metallic silver jelly roll and put them in like that. Um... find my pen okay that's a warm gray so I think I want the cool gray that warm I, 
think this might work. Let's give it a try. This came from the set of gray Jelly Roll Moonlights. That's what I was afraid of. I was afraid that this would not roll on. Easily enough. To be effective. Which I don't think it is. Uh, so I'm going to now look for my silver jelly roll. In metallic silver. Hopefully. Okay. Well, I was unable to find my silver jelly roll. I do not know why it is gone missing. It's probably fallen down someplace and it can't get up. <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes I can't help myself with bad jokes. They just come out. So I'm gonna use this toned gray jelly roll. It seems to be drawing a little bit better than the really light one. In my, in my experience with gel pens, I have learned that the darker the color, the better they tend to roll on. Oh, wow, those are nice, Cindy. Thank you, my baby. When I draw a print on like this, I just like to bunch it all up and do some overlapping. If you're not comfortable with this, then with this uh, overlapping stuff, uh, what you can do is just draw them. I can get an angle where you can actually see it. Uh, just draw them. Next to each other. Try to get them to touch like that we can ink in between them if we have any room left. All right. What are you doing, Kaden? I'm just looking at all your stuff that you got. He likes to dig in my art supplies. Yes, because your art supplies is cool. Mm -hmm. Slow down, Cindy. It's the circle thing in my bother thing. It's called a compass, honey. No. I would think at your grade in, in school, you would already know what those are. This is not a compass. It's not? It's a protractor? No. What is it? It's a compass, dude. No, it's a circle drawy thingy. It's a circle drawy thingy? Yes. I, it surprises me that I don't know that that's what it's called. It sounds just like what I would name it if it were mine. Okay. Please stop bumping the bed. So this gray color works fairly well. And uh, once I shade this uh, along this line right here, this will go even further into the background because of its, it's not um, a dark gray. Well, it's medium gray. All right.
Okay. So guys, this is where I'm going to leave this today. I'm definitely going to go through here, darken the shading with, with on this with a number two pencil. Um, carefully, very carefully. I really want more depth coming in here. I mean, I think this is fairly, I mean, I think I did a fairly good job, at least not on this one, but on these two, they're pretty good. And um, I don't know. Let me know what you guys come up with. I want to see your art on this. Be sure and tag me on Instagram. And I'm going to see you guys tomorrow for day 77. Wow, wow, wow. I wanted to uh, also remind you that when I talk about channel memberships, I am not talking about removing any of the free content that I already provide. I am simply talking about adding something extra for the people that want to support the channel. That's all. And so none of you who are working within a budget is going to lose out on anything that you've got now. I just want to make sure that that is clear. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow.